friends, welcome, welcome back. It is 90 degrees where I live today, um, 90 in LA. Uh, so <laughs> this, I'm glad I did a project, I chose a project today that's super fast. Um, this is a very simple project we're gonna do. It's called Below Painting. And this is a very classic, it's kind of a classic art technique. I mean, I wouldn't say technique. It's more of an art project, um, a process art project that has been around for a long time, but it's just always fun and kids love it. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, what, How, what is this goodness? So I'm excited to share that with you guys today. Uh, I wanted to mention that I have the winners for our giveaway. So if you haven't already gotten an email, Barbara Siebens and Tracy Howard, both of you guys are the winners for our Printworks giveaway from last week. So I'm sure that my sponsor is getting a hold of you if you haven't already gotten the email, but I wanted to make sure that you know that you are the winners. So lucky you guys. Uh, next week, I'm gonna be doing another giveaway of my book. I'm gonna have actually, I think about four, to, three to four copies here on YouTube to give away for you guys. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. So if you haven't already gotten my book, look for that giveaway next week. All right, so today we're gonna be making, we're gonna be starting um, by doing a kind of this process, which I'll turn my camera around in a minute, it's a little hard to see, a little bright, of using something, we're gonna use an unusual, uh, I don't know if I wanna say tool. We're gonna paint with something besides our hands and we're not gonna be using our feet either. So think about what that might be. I just showed you a little sneak peek. Uh, think about what that could be. And I did say the word blow painting, so you probably have an idea right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera and we're gonna get started with today's easy art project. All right, this is our art project. What you will need for this project is, you will need, I'm gonna move the samples aside for a moment. You're gonna need paper. If you have a thick cardstock or watercolor paper, something that's absorbent, that's even better. I would grab that. You're gonna need little cups and food coloring. And you will also need straws, okay? You can use paper straws, plastic straws, metal straws. I ha I'm trying to do more, um, trying to get away from plastic straws. So I have all my paper straws today and I have one for each of the colors that I'm going to be using to create the artwork. Um, but you don't have to do that. At the minimum though, try if you can to grab a few straws because you're gonna be dipping into the different colors. And so if you have just one straw, you may end up mixing up your colors. All right, so we are doing something called blow painting and we're going to use air to blow ink around a paper and create this really fun artwork. Now, at a minimum we're doing, this is what a process art project is, is called. Well, this is what I call, and a lot of other people would call a process art project. Process art is a type of art that is really not focused on the final outcome of what you get, but rather on the process of making and experimenting. I like to think of it as a precursor to a lot of STEAM projects, especially for young kids, because it really sets the tone for them, not to think of everything they do as precious, but instead to really get into the experimenting part of working on creative projects. So it's not always about doing something perfect or well, it's just about learning and being open-minded enough to experiment and try new things. So that's why process art is wonderful because it really is, that's what it's about. Uh, in this particular case, because the art does look pretty cool afterwards, you can actually turn it into something a little more figurative and fun, but um, you don't have to do this. So in it, we're gonna start with this simple process art version and then I'll show you if you want to do a more fanciful version because you know, it's fun, it's fun to do, and this is a cool process, then I'll show you how to do that as well. There's also a lot of steam in this project because we're using, basically, instead of using our hands to, you know, typically you would, you would dip a brush and paint and paint like that, we're gonna be using air and air pressure and changes in the air pressure and the angle of the air to create the artwork. 
So how we get started is we're going to grab our a blank sheet of paper. And I should mention that if you are on, um, if you're in a mess, like a, you might want to grab a tray or something because uh, this is a bit of a messy project. You can see that my work surface got a little messy. Um, so make sure that you're doing this somewhere where you can either clean afterwards or on a tray. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up our colors. Now, I've already mixed mine. I want to recommend that you use a lot of food coloring and very little water. You, you will need some water. I don't want you to waste all your food coloring on this, but the concentration should be pretty heavy on the pigment. Uh, if you really get more water than food coloring, you're gonna end up with a pretty washed out drawing and it won't, or painting, it won't quite have the same effect. It will still work, but it won't be as dramatic. So that's just something for you to think about when you're mixing up your paints. So I used a, a really generous squeeze of food coloring and then just a little bit of water in all of these. And I, will, I can save these. So one thing I should mention is we're not in a situation right now where we can go out and just purchase, you know, food coloring when we run out uh, easily. So save your stuff. I like to use these cups with lids because I can, that these are like salsa cups. I have lids for them and I can just save them for later projects. All right. So this is how we're gonna start this project. First, you're gonna grab a straw, and like I said, I've kind of color coordinated mine with my uh, ink, with my pigments, and I'm gonna tilt my cup to the side so that I have a pretty deep area, deep well of color here. I'm gonna dip the end of the straw in, I'm gonna put my finger over the top, and that's gonna suck up a little bit of that ink. Then I'm gonna put that on my paper like that and I'm going to start blowing. Now you're probably going to end up seeing the top of my head a little bit in this project. And you're going to blow your ink around the page. Preferably until you've blown it all out and there's no more pools of ink. And what you should notice, you guys, as you do this, is that depending on the way you blow, if you blow straight down, you're gonna get a different type of pattern. I'll try that. Than you would if you go at an angle. So part of this and the magic of this is really like experimenting with how you blow on the ink. And as I said, as you, the different way, the amount of pressure that you add, so if you blow hard and fast, or if you blow kind of steady, slow and steady, you're gonna get a slightly different, um, the ink will blow out slightly differently. This is a tutorial where I'm not gonna talk as much because I'm really, <laughs> I can't. I think this is fun because you really can start blowing all the little lines of ink out um, and seeing all these little fine lines. So it starts out as a blob and then it kind of moves out into these little fine like fingers of ink. Another interesting thing to note is that you can use this a little bit as a color mixing exercise if you want, depending on if you limit yourself to the primary colors. You should see as the colors overlap some color mixing. Let me see if I can get it to happen. Although I already put purple on there. Let's see if we can get an orange in the yellow area. Well, I'm not getting a ton of orange today, but you, if I had, I think if I had a little bit more of a diluted color, I would. What I am seeing is some capillary action. I'm seeing that location, the paper is absorbing the liquids. And as it does, the new ink that I put on tends to want to flow along those lines of, that are already created, which is kind of interesting. Um, let me try some green. Oh, see, now I am getting some color mixing. I'm getting some green in there and I haven't added green. Yay! <laughs> 
So there's a lot of ways to turn, add some different layers of art, ideas, color theory, and this is color week after all. And I'm moving this paper around like you can see, obviously. Wow, I got a whole line across the whole page and I'm tired. Um, so this is a way I'm gonna, now I'm gonna start on doing a, a monster version, but as I do that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about using air and how scientists and engineers use air. So I know a lot of us think of air as, um, it's just, it's like what we breathe, it keeps us alive, it's what surrounds us, but air is actually used a lot in engineering, science, um, engineers, there's a special branch of engineering called hydraulics, and it is dedicated to the use of compressed air. So that's when you take air and you put it into like a, a bottle or a canister, and then you use it for to do work. Um, I know like a lot of painters use that. So they use, they have these special paint, um, they blow paint, like spray paint, and they use compressed air to blow that out. You can clean with air. Have you ever cleaned your um, uh, computer keyboard with like that compressed air? That's a good example of it. But there's also a lot of really industrial ways that air is used to do work. Also, let's think about windmills. Windmills basically harness the air and air power, wind power, to generate electricity. All right, so I'm moving on to my next project, which is the monsters. It's the same idea, but in this case, we're gonna start off with a face, and then we're gonna add on um, like hair or <laughs> just different body parts, I guess, with the blow painting technique. So I'm using, um, these are alcohol-based markers, so they are not gonna be dissolved by any of the liquid paint that I put on here. But if you used washable markers, I'd be curious to see what would happen because you'd probably get some interesting, te some interesting effects when you have, when you use like a water-based marker and then you add layer, uh, liquids to it because they're just gonna start dissolving some of the ink. So if you wanna do this as a monster project, you could just basically take and draw a piece, draw on a piece of paper with markers, draw your form, and then we're gonna use the this technique to make hair, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we want to do is we're gonna drop the ink on the edges of the drawing and blow out. And we can keep going and make give this guy some hair. Now I will link in the description below to some other um, projects that use this technique to do fanciful kind of creations. Because obviously this technique is really cute and really fun and has these like playful, all this playful kind of ink moving around the paper lends itself to making something out of it. I'm gonna add a couple more layers and then I'm gonna stop because I'm getting tired. <laughs> be sure, like I said, it's 90 degrees where I live right now. I'm gonna go in and cool off after this. Be sure to take a break if you need to, okay? If you're blowing on this and you feel lightheaded. And let's do some red and then we'll wrap it up for today. Woo! Now let's try and see what I get if I get a if blow straight down and really hard. So some different effects there. Um, cute, right? I gotta take a break because I really am getting a little light. <laughs> but if you want, you can see some examples like I did earlier where I blew all the way around the monster. So he sort of looked like he exploded. All right, that's it for this project. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera around.
All right. Woo! I'm, I really am lightheaded, you guys. Um, so that's the thing. When you use your lungs and air power to create art, you do sometimes need to take a break. <laughs> That's it for today's project. I hope you guys will subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already, um, as well as my email list where I send out all the materials. When we do our live demos, I send out all the materials information to my email subscribers in advance so you guys can join me here and do the project alongside me. Um, I'm also going to drop a bunch of links in the description below for uh, this project on my blog as well as a bunch of the variations that I know some of my friends have done on other blogs and websites. So there'll be some other links for you guys to explore if you like this process. Uh, that's it for today. I hope to see you guys back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be doing Cosmic Sun Catchers. It's one of the most popular posts on my blog. Um, I talked about it on my Instagram account earlier in the week. That's another one. If you're not on my, if you don't follow me on IG, go ahead and do that. It's at Babble Dabble Do. Um, you can see a sneak peek actually of the tomorrow's project there. They take a few days to dry. So I started them earlier in the week and they are ready to go. So I cannot wait to share those with you tomorrow. And tomorrow's project is extremely easy. We'll probably in and out in five minutes because it's a quick one, but it's a, it's a beautiful one. All right, that's it for today, you guys. I will see you back tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining in. Bye.